Today, it is possible to directly communicate with people hundreds of years in the future. All you need to do is write a message, add a few objects and records that say something about the time you are living in and bury it in a box somewhere for future generations to find. That's how you make a time capsule. And in this video, we're looking at the 10 most exciting time capsules from the past. Be sure you know the number one of this list. Number 10. Why bury a box when you can bury a car? The residents of Tulsa, Oklahoma ran an unusual competition in 1957. When they buried a Plymouth Belvedere as a competition prize with the difference the winner couldn't receive the car for 50 years, all they had to do was predict what the population of Tulsa would be in 2007. The brand new car, along with a barrel full of artifacts from the Tulsa of the time, was lowered into an underground vault, entombed with layers of concrete on top, and then forgotten about for 50 years. The organizers had made a terrible mistake though the vault may have been able to sustain a nuclear attack on the surface, but it was vulnerable to water seeping through from below the vault, flooded, and the car was ruined. Fortunately, the barrel survived with its still pristine contents, including a flag of the United States of America with 48 stars. Restoration work on the car proved impossible, so it now sits in a museum. Number 9. Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, was a man who spent his whole life focusing on future technologies back in 1983 when the idea of the iPad was just a twinkle in his eye. He contributed to the bearing of a time capsule during the International Design Conference in Colorado. There were several contemporary 1983 items in the capsule, including a six-pack of beers and an album of the Moody Blues. However, Jobs threw in the mouse from Apple's first ever computer into the 13-foot-long capsule in the hope that by the time it was opened, technology would be considered obsolete and curious. The capsule was intended to be dug up in the year 2000, but shifting land in the area meant that nobody could find it. It wasn't until 2013 it was finally located, a full 30 years after it was buried. Jobs sadly wasn't around to see it, but his mouse had survived the three decades unscathed. Number 8. Steve Jobs isn't the only famous name associated with the time capsule. The famous French author Jules Verne, best known for his novel Around the World in 80 Days, also had one buried close to his tomb in France. Verne passed away in 1905, but it wasn't until 2017 that the steel box was discovered. Engravings on Verne's own tombstone, along with so cues in his work, allured to the existence of the box, but it wasn't until archaeologists unearthed it that the rumors could be proven true. The etchings on the exterior of the box had been worn away by time and oxidation, and so the true meaning of the half-rotted contents is mysterious. There are a telescope and a ring, presumably both possessions of Verne, a coin from medieval times, and a key belonging to something unknown. Stranger Still is a book about a mining treaty, a manuscript covered in references to alchemy and paperwork covered in undecipherable drawings and symbols just to add to the confusion. There's also information about the phases of the moon. Was this an elaborate prank by the great writer, or is it just too clever for us to understand? The worry with burying a time capsule is that someone might just forget it's there and never find it. Number 7. We almost lost the Steve Jobs capsule from 1993. One that was buried in New York in 1914 went missing for even longer. The delicately decorized bronze box had been sealed on Wall Street by a businessman's association just before the start of the First World War, and then left to the care of the New York Historical Society, who were told it should be open in 1974. They put it into storage and then somehow forgot about it. It was almost the end of the 1990s by the time someone noticed it, so by that point they just decided to wait a full hundred years before. Revealing the contents, finally the box was opened in 2014, revealing pristine condition newspapers from the day it was sealed, along with medals from military figures of the time and a telegram from the New York State governor of the era, which spoke of his hope that all of New York's problems would have been solved by the time it wasn't sealed. Excited to know more? But first, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Number six. Not all time capsules that are hidden away come with a pre-aged opening gate. Some are just left to chance. 
That was the case from a 1901 capsule in Bolton, which had sat for over a century hidden in plain sight inside the head of a lion statue which was positioned to guard the old state house. The existence of the time capsule only came to light when the great-great-granddaughter of Samuel Rogers, the man who built the lion and arranged for the installation of the capsule, decided the time was right to share her family's secret. Inside are a number of official documents of the time, including a book about the foreign relations of the United States of America from 1896 and copies of all local newspapers. As the box was both air and water tight, everything within it was the same as it had been when it was last saw the light over a century earlier. There's also a badge from the political campaign of Teddy Roosevelt, a nail from the Old South Church, and a piece of music signed by John Silver. A new time capsule is now being put into the lion's head and sealed up for another hundred years. Number five. A century is a long time for a time capsule to stay unopened, but America's founding fathers, Paul Revere and Samuel Adams, managed to do better than that. They buried a capsule of their own in 1795, and it stayed there until 2015. The brass box was interred below Massachusetts State House and had corroded badly over the years since its burial, but it had done a great job of preserving its contents. Inside was a silver plate crafted by Revere's own hands, a bronze George Washington medal, and a set of coins, including a valuable 1652 pine tree shilling, which has special historical significance because it was minted as a show of defiance against the British. The box had been buried as part of a special ceremony marking 20 years of American independence. It's believed it had been opened once before in 1855 to be cleaned, although this can't be proven now. It's back below the state house again with some extra items from our own time added to it. Number four, a time capsule doesn't have to be words or pictures sometimes. It can be music too. When Daniel, afraid Oroto, was helping to clear out his grandfather's home in Ecuador after the old man had passed, he found 300 old-fashioned reel-to-reel magnetic tapes in his attic untouched by the elements. These were the last remaining traces of his grandfather's life's work. Carlos Rota once owned and operated the Knife Record Company, which dealt in Ecuadorian folk music during the 1950s. The reels represented every single master tape the label had ever created. Most of the tapes were labeled, but 80 unlabeled reels found in a suitcase are posing a mystery to Daniel as he attempts to identify them at all amazingly. He got a lucky break walking through the center of his hometown of Quito when he heard a street musician playing one of the unknown songs. That musician was Laura, when Allah, a blind accordion player who was now in her 70s but had recorded with Daniel's father all those years ago, she's now helping him to identify the remaining lost music, which Daniel hopes to digitize and put online. Number three, some people who bury time capsules think that a century or two isn't long enough. That's why this one below the MIT campus in Cambridge, Massachusetts has been ordered to remain sealed until 2,957. It's more of a glass tube than a capsule and was uncovered by accident by workers constructing a new building on the site. Although it hasn't been opened, we can see through the glass that contains electronic artifacts from the day it was buried in 1957, including an experimental alternative to the standard transistor known as a Cairo. Tron researchers went looking through the official records of the university and found it was buried there by then-MIT President James R. Killian Jr. in celebration of the opening of a new laboratory for nuclear science. To preserve the contents, it was filled with argon gas and then the gas was sealed using a blowtorch. Hopefully there's still someone around open at 900 years from now. Number two. While it's true that some capsules get forgotten about and end up being opened later than planned, some are accidentally uncovered too early even when the burying of the capsule was broadcast on television. Blue Peter is one of the most popular children's television programs in the United Kingdom and their host buried a time capsule between London's Millennium Dome, which is now the O2 Arena, in 1998. Viewers of the show had been asked to send in their own submissions for the capsule when they did en masse, and when it was buried, it was supposed to stay there until 2050. Unfortunately, 
contractors carrying out work on the building unearthed and damaged it in 2017. Although the casing was damaged, the contents were unharmed. They included a football from France, 1998 World Cup, a portrait of a dove to represent the peace created by the Good Friday Agreement, a book by the author Ronald Ball, and a Teletubby doll. The Blue Peter team are now planning to rebury it once more until 2050. Although we wonder what the point is, not everyone knows what's in it. Number one. The word capsule implies something quite small, but anything can become a time capsule if it's safely stored and locked away from the world. Even a whole apartment. This beautiful apartment in the very center of Paris sat silently for more than 70 years until she passed away at the age of 91 and left it to her heir in her will. There had no idea it even existed. The woman knew only as Miss de Florian had fled Paris as the Second World War. Out. Moving to the south of France and building a new life there, she never returned when a team turned up to perform an inventory. They were greeted by cobwebs dust and a perfect home from decades prior that must have felt like time travel to walk into. Tables, chairs, perfume bottles and clothes were all exactly where they had been left waiting for their owner to return. Most breathtakingly of all, a full-size portrait of a woman in pink was discovered in the apartment, signed by the famous painter Giovanni Boldini. A stash of love letters found with the painting indicated that Boldini had been in a romantic relationship with Miss de Florian's grandmother and that the painting was of her. It was sent to an auction and sold for $3 million. That's it for today, guys. If you have something to talk about the time capsules, then let us know in the comment box below. Till then, like and share this video and enjoy our playlist, The Top 10 Most Awesome Foods. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.